Warriors, Mrs. Adams here again. Today we are going to draw a tree frog with some really cool background. You guys can get very creative with some jungle background and things. We'll talk about that more later on, but just something to keep in mind before we get started. So I want you to get your art paper, your blank paper, and something to draw with. Whatever you have available is just fine, but go ahead and get what you need and we are going to just jump right in and get started. So we are going to draw this tree frog and notice how his body is kind of rounded. So you can really guys, you can really have your paper sideways or up and down tall today. It does not matter because his body, he's kind of, you know, curled up looking like he might jump in a minute. And so his, he's sort of rounded. So no big deal. You can have your paper however you want. We are going to start with his eyeball. And of course you guys know that frogs have nice big eyes. So we're gonna make a nice rounded circle, um, kind of big on his face for his eyeball. Of course, my older warriors, you know that if you make an eyeball like this big on your paper, he's definitely not gonna fit. So don't make it too big, but just kind of think about how his eye takes up a lot of his face, okay? So you don't want a teeny weeny little eye. He's gonna be a teeny weeny little, little uh, not turtle, that was last week. He's gonna be a tiny little frog, okay? so. We're gonna start with the eye, and you can really place it on your paper anywhere you want today. I'm gonna to make just a nice round circle for the eye. That's all you need to do at first. Then we're gonna double it very, very, very skinny next to it. I'm just gonna double that circle, very skinny. And then you guys will take your time and you can fill this in the center circle, almost solid, Leave a little bit, bit of uh, paper showing that, that reflection off of their eye. It's really pronounced on a frog because their eyes are so big and you can really see that bright white reflection. So take your time and with whatever you've got, you're gonna fill this center in almost solid, but we're gonna leave a little space of white showing for the reflection on our frog's eye. Just like we've talked about before, that shows he's alive, that shows it's realistic, okay? Now, here's where he's gonna start to look a little weird, okay? The frog is gonna look strange until like the very end of the drawing. So please don't worry if yours is looking a little funny at first, you really have to draw like the details and the legs and everything, he's just gonna look kind of bleh for a couple minutes. So don't worry about it. I know you might be drawing with a pencil. Please guys, don't worry about erasing and trying to get perfect. He is not gonna be perfect. And something we always talk about in art too, it's so easy to disguise anything that you don't necessarily love on your frog today because you can take and you can make a line that you made that you don't really like. You can make it into spots or stripes or patterns of some sort, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind too as we're drawing. My challenge to you is not to erase my challenge to you, my older warriors, is for you to turn a mark that you don't like into something else. Super easy to camouflage, okay? So we'll go through that more in just a second. But starting about now, it's gonna look a little weird until the very end, so don't worry. There's a little bump over his eye, so I'm gonna make a curve line that goes over just the top of his eye, sticking pretty close to his eyeball. Then we're gonna jump over and draw his nostrils. He, of course, doesn't have a nose that sticks out like we do. He's just got nostrils set in his head, just like the turtle did. So we're gonna draw just a little tiny dot for his nostrils. Now look where it is, in front of the eye, over just a little ways. He's not a crocodile, it's not gonna be way far over. Over a little ways, we're just gonna make a tiny little dot for his nostril. Then it's gonna look really weird. We're gonna make this curve line that's right in front of the nostril, super close to the nostril. It's gonna curve back and it's gonna sort of go below the eye and slant down just a little bit. It's just the way their mouths are shaped. He's not like frowning, he's not grumpy or anything. Their mouths just kind of slant down a little bit. So it's gonna look weird, don't worry. Super close to that nostril. I'm gonna make a curve line that sticks, it doesn't go far down, it sticks pretty close to the eye. It's gonna go under the eye and it's just gonna slant down just a little bit and stop, okay? Then we're gonna curve it over the eye. We're gonna make sure to go over that ridge that we drew over the eye. We're gonna go over and about, you know, at the end of the eye is where I'm gonna stop, so watch. 
sticking, you know, a little close to the eye. We're gonna go over that eye. When I get to the end of the eye, stop, okay? Looks kind of weird right now, no big deal. We are gonna show, his eyes are so big, you can actually see that ridge of the other eye on the top, okay? So, see this little curve right here? That's his other eyeball that's so big, it's sticking out of the top. So jump across, I'm gonna look at this ridge, I'm gonna jump across that line that I just drew, and I'm gonna make another curve line for the ridge of his other eyeball. His eyes are so big. Now, we're gonna jump back down, and I'm gonna start just a really skinny line that slants down just a little ways. It's a little bit longer than what I've already got. That is to show his throat. That's a little bit of his neck and a little bit of his throat. So it's very skinny next to the mouth, and it doesn't go too far, it goes just a little bit past. So I'm gonna look at the mouth. I'm gonna start in about the middle of it, somewhere maybe a little bit forward. I'm gonna go very skinny, very close to what I've already got, and it's gonna slant down just a little further and back. Then, that's where I know I'm gonna start his leg, his front leg. So, not at the end of this line, but at just a little ways. I'm gonna make this curve line that slants back for the top part of his leg. If you imagine like to where our elbow would be, we're gonna make this part of his front leg, okay? So, I'm gonna make a slanted line that comes back. Watch, you're gonna start here, you're gonna look here, and we're gonna go just a tiny bit up, and I'm gonna make a slanted line that curves back for just the top part of his leg. Then it's bent forward and down. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another one that's bent just slightly forward and down for the bottom part of that leg, okay? So we've drawn to here. Now we're gonna draw this part that's slanting down. So I'm gonna make it come down a little ways, maybe a little forward. And then we're gonna go ahead and double this. Now watch again. It looks weird, I know, don't worry about it. We're gonna make it, it's pretty skinny, guys. His front legs are really pretty skinny. So I don't want this big muscle man, I don't want this huge curve line over here, it's gonna make him look like, you know, Popeye, like big, huge muscles. It's pretty skinny. So I'm gonna look at this line that I started right here, and pretty skinny next to it, go over just a little ways. We're gonna double it. See how it's, it stays pretty skinny? And then we're gonna double this one coming down. Okay, he's got a pretty skinny little leg. Now, the very important is toes. These are tree frogs. You guys have probably seen pictures. We don't have them necessarily in Oklahoma, these jungle tree frogs. They live in more South America and in the rainforest. They have these toes that have these wide pads on the end. And actually there's like this kind of gummy substance that is on these toe paddings. And that's so they can crawl up really flat, they could crawl straight up our wall if they wanted to, like Spider-Man. They can just crawl right up so they can stick to leaves, they can stick to trees and vines and branches and crawl right up. So we're gonna go ahead and draw his, his toes with those sticky pads, okay? Now he's got long toes and he's got those little sticky pads on the end. So we're gonna start at the end of this line. See this line that's on the side of his eye? Not this out, not this side, but on this side is where I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna make a long toe that kind of sticks forward. And then on the end, there's a little curve to show that sticky pad. I'm just gonna make it curve, kind of small, and curve it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and very skinny, these are long, skinny, skinny toes. I'm gonna skinny, bring it back in, look. I'm gonna stop, don't touch. I'm gonna do another one. It's gonna curve forward. Maybe it might slant down a little bit more, however you want. But I'm gonna go ahead and, and bring it forward again. We are gonna use that sticky pad. We're gonna make a little curve line for that sticky padding. This time, you guys, we're gonna make it come back and touch. So I'm just gonna make it come on back and touch. I know it looks weird. We're gonna see his toes are so long, you can see another couple sticking out on the other side. So, look where they touch, where the toe and the arm touch. You're gonna come over just a little bit and I'm just gonna add another one, another curve line out. 
with that sticky padding with a curve line that doesn't touch. And then I'm gonna bring it back and I'm not gonna touch this time because I have room. You might run out of room and you can make touch. I have room, I think I'm gonna stick one more little toe on. Curve line with that sticky pad and bring it on back. If you would like, if you have some room, there is a little bit of webbing in between their toes. So I can add teeny little curve lines in between their toes. If that's a detail you want, great. Like this guy, I don't really see the webbing as much. It really blends in and you don't see the webbing. So if you don't have those little curve lines in between, no big deal. No big deal. Now, we can see the other foot on the other side. And you don't see much of the leg, of course, because it's hiding behind his head but you do see the other foot. So I'm gonna look, look about where his mouth touched his arm. That's about where you see his foot kind of sticking out. So somewhere in this area, I'm gonna go ahead and make another curve line that curves down for a toe, however long you want. And then we're gonna add that sticky padding, a little curve line, don't touch. And this one we can make a little different. It almost looks like his toes are a little bit more spread out. So I can go ahead and I'm gonna swing this over, but then I'm gonna make it curve this way to show that it's sort of more spread out. Not so much like this, but more spread out. Then I'm gonna add um, that sticky padding on his next toe. In fact, I think I'm gonna make this one a little bit longer and sticky pad. I'm gonna bring it up, don't touch. I'm gonna add another toe with the sticky padding. And guys, you might want only three showing and it'll look like the fourth is being hidden by his body. You might have room, I have room for four, so I'm gonna make a fourth. You do it however you want, but if you wanted to just go ahead and make this touch, you might only see three and that's fine. I have room for four, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add one more with the sticky pad and bring it in and touch. Since I could see my webbing on this foot, I'm gonna go ahead and show the little tiny curve lines in between on this foot. Like I said, you might see, you might not, no big deal. Okay, so we've got the, the front half of our frog going. Now we're gonna see just a little bit of his belly. He's kind of crunched up so you don't see too much of a curve line, but you see a little bit of his belly. So let's look at this bottom line right here that we had that's touching this foot, this bottom line right here. I'm gonna stop and jump over my front leg and I'm gonna make just a little slanted line that comes down. It's gonna be slanted, don't make it flat. We're gonna make it slanted down, but it's not too long. It's not like crocodile long, okay? So look, we're gonna stop, jump over, slanted line. Stop, jump over, slanted line, not too long. Then we've got his big long leg that's kind of folded up um, and so, of course, frogs are great jumpers. And this leg, I, I read what's cool too about tree frogs is they actually, they're super tiny, first of all. Most of them are very tiny. Some of them are so small they can sit right on the end of your finger. They're that tiny. And what they love to do is the sticky padding on their front legs and their back legs. They will crawl underneath a leaf and that's where they'll sleep. They'll sleep like clinging on the leaf on the underside. So they're like stuck there. And that way, you know, if a bird's flying over, they don't see it, they're hidden underneath the leaf. And so this back leg, these front legs with the sticky padding, so important so they can be hidden, okay? So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and show this curve line uh, for his back leg. Now guys, watch before you make this, okay? So, and remember, if you make something you don't love, you can always turn it into a design on him, but watch before you make it. We are gonna make sort of a slanted, almost like a U, okay? We're gonna make this curve line. It's gonna slant and it's almost like a U. So watch. I'm gonna kind of slant over. I'm gonna see where the end of this line is and come over just a little bit. Sort of take my finger, kind of go up at a slant and that's where I know I'm gonna start. Now watch, I'm gonna make a curve line that cuts across and it's gonna be like a slanted U, a nice big curve line, like a slanted U, and then stop. Now, right in the middle of that U, I'm gonna go kind of right in the middle, and then I'm gonna come a little closer to the bottom, 
but I'm going to stay in the middle and I'm going to make a curve line that comes up a little bit past the U and stop. Okay, so see, it doesn't touch. It starts kind of right in the middle and it's going to go a little bit past, okay? This is just practice. If you're not loving it so far, I know it looks weird. No big deal. Totally just practice, okay? There's no right or wrong. So we've got it a little bit past. Then you've got to really watch. We're going to make another curve line. It's going to be very close to this side of the U right here. And it's just going to curve down and, and stop. So watch. Starting right here. It's going to curve, sticking really close to the U, sticking close to the U, sticking close to the U. When you get to the bottom of the U, stop. Okay? You've got a bent frog leg. Kind of tricky directions. If you need to rewind and watch it again, no problem. I know it's a little tricky directions, but check it out. You have a bent frog leg. So now we, of course, need to add his toes. On the front, they have four toes. On the back, they have five. If you only have room for three or four to draw, that's fine. It'll just look like some of his toes are hidden. No big deal. Draw however many toes you want on the back. Nobody's going to count them, I promise. We are going to start at the bottom of this line. And the back toes are even a little bit longer still. So we are going to start at the bottom and you're just going to make sort of a slanted line for your first toe, however long you want. And then of course you guys are experts now. We're going to make a little curve line for that sticky pad and keep it very skinny and don't touch. We are going to add another toe forward. Maybe this one's a little longer, maybe it's a little shorter. If you'll notice, their toes are all kind of a little bit different, so no big deal. Sticky pad, don't touch. And skinny back. We're gonna add another one if you have room. Sticky pad. Keep it skinny and come back. And let's see, I think I am going to add just one more toe. I'm going to make it sort of look like my other toe sort of hiding. Sticky pad. And then watch, I'm just going to make it touch the leg. Okay? So, like I said, you might draw all five, you might not, no big deal. If you want to show that webbing in between, you may absolutely do so. You don't have to, it's up to you. Okay, so now we've got his back. There is just a slight little curve, just a little bit of a curve. He's not a camel, there's not a big bump up, but there is just a little tiny, tiny curve, and it's gonna curve down and it's gonna touch the back of that leg. See the top and the back where it's kind of slanted? Right here is where it's gonna touch. So you gotta pay attention. You don't be silly and sort of go, uh-oh, 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 where do I touch it? You want to watch with your eye, even take your finger and trace it out for practice before you do it. We're going to go ahead and make a curve line that comes back, and I'm watching, and I'm watching, and it's going to curve in and touch the back of the leg. The other leg, super easy because you don't see much. They are so big, though, that when they're bent up, you can see the other side kind of sticking out, just like you can see the other side of the eye sticking out. So I'm just gonna kind of look and go across from this leg and just sort of guesstimate, decide where you want this other leg and just sort of make a curve line, guys. That's all you need to do for that back. Okay, so now the fun part. I want you to add some designs. Tree frogs have lots of design possibilities. There's all sorts of um, types of tree frogs and they all have different patterns. They all have different designs. There are, I mean, you could use the cool thing is too, you can use any colors that you could possibly imagine. Like this guy has lots of black with yellow stripes and red and polka dot details. Um, you guys have probably seen these tr uh, green tree frogs before. They have red eyes with some blue and some yellow and some orange. Super cool colors. So that's the fun part. You guys can get very creative with your designs and with your colors. Now, my older warriors, you guys know, we've talked about this lots of times, if you want a realistic tree frog, you are not going to have symbols on your tree frog. Remember, symbols are what like people draw that you don't see in nature. So you're not going to have on a realistic tree frog, a frog with stars or a frog with hearts 
or a frog with smiley faces as part of your design. That's just what people draw that you don't see those in real life in nature. So if you want to add these sort of designs and make more of an abstract frog, it's up to you. That's totally fine. If you want a realistic tree frog, then you're gonna do more natural um, patterns and designs. And so you might make, you know, not, not perfect stripes. You might make spots, but they're definitely not perfect polka dots. They're kind of, some are small, some are bumpy, some are wavy. You can make spots inside of spots. A lot of them have sort of these stripes down their back. So right down his back, I can make this sort of cool stripe. I could even make stripes that stop and jump over and go across that stripe if I wanted to, almost like tiger stripes. I looked at a lot of tree frog pictures this week, and I mean, you can get so creative with the designs and the patterns and the colors. Don't forget to do uh, a design on this leg. So if I've got like stripes on this leg, I'll probably wanna add some stripes on that leg. Don't forget to add design on that. Don't leave that one blank, okay? For the background this week, jungle background. One of my favorite backgrounds. You can have so much fun with jungle background. So first of all, he is a tree frog. He's sticking, but he's definitely not floating or flying. Okay, so we want him to be on something. You could draw him on a flower petal. You could draw him on a leaf. You could draw him on a branch or on the side of a tree. You could even turn your paper this way and make it look like he's stuck, you know, on the side. Okay, so it's up to you. But I think I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and draw like a branch and it's gonna have texture, rough, bumpy, so it's not gonna be perfectly smooth. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a branch coming. To show some more of that texture I could show, like we've talked about a lot of times, I could show some rough, bumpy lines to show that the tree branch is rough and bumpy so it doesn't look smooth, it looks rough and bumpy like a real tree branch. You could add leaves of course he's in the rainforest he's in the jungle so i don't have too much room on mine add what you want so maybe i'm going to add some leaves sticking up i have more room on the top you guys have all drawn leaves with miss adams a million times before you could add vines in the background like this guy has some vines so for vines i could just make remember we're just going to do like a skinny bumpy line and just double it really close and I could have vines hanging in the background. You guys remember those? You could have little jungle flowers. We've drawn those before. Um, you get creative with your background and with coloring. Speaking of coloring, you, just like with the turtle, I don't wanna see, even if it's the most solid coloring you've ever done, I don't wanna see one solid block of color on your tree frog, okay? Even if you do abstract designs, Right, I wanna see those abstract designs, make them stand out by doing them a different color. So if my hearts are gonna be blue, I want all, I want the hearts blue and I want the area around the hearts a different color, okay? If you're doing a more realistic tree frog, of course, you don't see any tree frogs up here that are just one solid color, okay? So I want you to really take your time. I was so impressed last week um, with the coloring jobs that you guys did. I could see you really thinking about the colors that you were using and really coloring solidly, even if they were abstract. That's all I care about, okay? So if you have markers, if you have paints, if you have crayons, I want you to take your time and do your design work, not just with your drawing, but with your coloring as well, okay? So take your time. And you know, some of you, without me even mentioning anything, I could see some of you really giving thought to how you were using your crayons and doing some different um, pressing harder in some areas and softer in some areas to give that difference in the color. So for example, some of you I saw uh, last week, you pushed hard on some details and really got a very dark line. And then you push lighter or even with a different color. And that's a really cool coloring technique. I know you guys all have crayons, so if you want to start to really push yourself, that's a really cool coloring technique to show some differences, some variations in um, the shade, okay, of the color. So even if you just have a handful of crayons, that's a way to make it some differences and make it look a little bit more interesting for people who are looking at your drawing, okay? So that's our tree frog. I am proud of you guys for sticking with it. I hope that you had fun. 
do not, do not forget to take a picture and add it to the attachments. Guys, you're getting a grade in art. I have to see some artwork. Every time we draw, I need to see your artwork. Do not forget, I can't stress it enough. So as soon as you are done, don't put it off to the side and think you'll do it later. As soon as you are done, take a picture of your tree frog and attach it for me, okay? And I love to see what you do. It's my favorite part of the week. So I love you guys. I hope you are well, and I can't wait to draw with you again next time. Bye, warriors.